In what may be one of the most shocking developments yet in the coronavirus pandemic, the DOJ is seeking new emergency powers to indefinitely detain someone during an emergency. And I can understand why they'd want to do it. Many people are violating the shelter in place orders, and you're only being asked nicely to do it, but people don't care. A lot of people are hoarding, they're defying the recommendations from the government and the CDC, and they're putting all of us at risk. It kind of feels like when you were a little kid in school and the teacher punished everyone because one person was acting up, making everything bad for everyone else. I am absolutely willing to do what I must to protect myself, my friends, my family, to take the advice of those I trust in the government, those I trust. I don't trust the government as a whole, but I want to do the right thing. And that means limiting our exposure to big events, not going outside. And now in New Jersey, where I live, I am under a shelter in place order. They're saying, don't go out to big gatherings. You can walk around, you can go to the store, but keep it limited. We are being asked nicely by authorities to do the right thing. We are still able to go out and, and essentially do whatever we want to do, except, you know, retail shops are going to be closing. Restaurants are closing their takeout only. And some of these are considered very, very unreasonable. Many people are concerned the government is now threatening businesses they have to shut down. I'm worried about this, and I'm also worried about the alternative. This now, what I'm seeing here from Politico, is possibly the scariest thing I have ever seen. And we're in an emergency. We're torn between wanting to do the right thing for our community and being told to blindly trust a government that would seek to violate our constitutional rights. Now, I, I suppose during an emergency, they could suspend your constitutional rights. We've seen it happen in the past. That's worrying. We're faced with a real challenge. Do we just trust the government? I honestly would prefer not to, but we are facing a serious pandemic. We're seeing the videos. There's a bunch of other countries that are dealing with this. I don't think that all of the countries in the world are teaming up for some grand conspiracy, in which case I think we do have to take this seriously. But I also refuse and reject our government taking any actions like China had done. Let's read the story from Politico. The Justice Department has quietly asked Congress for the ability to ask chief judges to detain people indefinitely without trial during emergencies, part of a push for new powers that comes as the coronavirus spreads through the United, through the United States. Documents reviewed by Politico detail the department's requests on, to, to lawmakers on a host of topics, including the statute of limitations, asylum, and the way court hearings are conducted. Politico has uh, Politico also reviewed and previously reported on documents seeking the authority to extend deadlines on merger reviews and prosecutions. A Justice Department spokesperson declined to comment on both documents. The move has tapped into a broader fear among civil liberties advocates and Donald Trump's critics that the president will use a moment of crisis to push for controversial policy changes. I don't care if it's Trump, Obama, Bush, Clinton. They do this. It's not unique to any one presidency. Already, he has said the pandemic as a reason for heighten, heightening border restrictions and restricting asylum claims. He has also pushed for further tax cuts as the economy withers, arguing that it would soften the financial blow to Americans. And even without policy changes, Trump has vast emergency powers that he could legally deploy right now to try and slow the coronavirus outbreak. Well, we know the Defense Production Act is important, and these powers have existed for a long time. We need the executive branch to act quickly and decisively. I am not and have never been a big supporter of Donald Trump. But even I have to admit, desperate times call for desperate measures. I'm not going to sit here and pretend it is a unique to Donald Trump thing. And I absolutely will criticize the expansion of executive authority. They don't need to play this game that it's civil liberties advocates and Donald Trump's critics. But fine, put me in the camp of civil liberties advocates, though I think that doesn't necessarily apply to the perspective Politico is pushing because we've seen the people who, at, who claim to advocate for civil, civil liberties and what they really are supporting. The DOJ requests, which are unlikely to make it through a Democratic-led House, span several stages of the legal process from initial arrest to, uh, to how cases are processed and investigated. In one of the documents, the department proposed that Congress grant the attorney general power to ask the chief judge of any district court to pause court proceedings whenever the district court is fully or partially closed by virtue of any natural disaster, civil disobedience, or, or other emergency situation. The proposal would also grant those top judges broad authority to pause court proceedings during emergencies. It would apply to any statutes or rules of procedure otherwise affecting pre-arrest, post-arrest, pre-trial, trial, and post-trial procedures in criminal and juvenile proceedings and all civil process and proceedings. According to draft legislative language, 
the department shared with Congress. In making the case for the change, the DOJ document wrote that individual judges can currently pause proceedings during emergencies, but that their proposal would make sure all judges in any particular district could handle emergencies in a consistent manner. The request raised eyebrows because of its potential implications for habeas corpus, the constitutional right to appear before a judge after arrest and seek release. Not only would it be a violation of that, but it says affecting pre-arrest, said Norman L. Raymer, the executive director of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. So that means you could be arrested and never brought before a judge until they decide that the emergency or the civil disobedience is over. I find it absolutely terrifying, especially in a time of emergency. We should be very careful about granting new powers to the government. Yes, yes, 100%. One of the benefits of the shrieking, nonsensical anger over Trump is a curtailing of federal uh, of federal powers, but mo- mostly executive authority. While I think they certainly take it way too far, we have seen executive authority growing horrifyingly quickly over the past several presidencies. So there is still a net benefit to the shrieking from the Democrats who hate Trump in that we don't we want to make sure that executive authority remains curtailed, but it has been growing And it seems like it's not going to stop. This kind of stuff scares me. I don't care who the president is. You don't give the executive branch this power because it passes on to the next president. If you're someone who likes Trump, just imagine what would happen when the next Democratic president has this this authority. And if you're a Democrat, you wouldn't want to give Trump the authority. I don't think anybody should have the authority. We, we, We have a constitution for a reason. It's why we are the greatest nation on the planet. And I certainly think so. Reimer said the possibility of chief chief judges suspending all court rules during an emergency without a clear end in sight was deeply disturbing. That is something that should not happen in a democracy. Well, we're not a democracy, we're a constitutional republic, but I get the point you're making. The department also asked Congress to pause the statute of limitations for criminal investigations and civil proceedings during national emergencies and for one year following the end of the national emergency, according to draft legislation. No, I say no. I get it, man. We're in an emergency now, but there are often states of emergency declared for a bunch of reasons you'd probably be shocked by. And then all they have to do is say, well, this is an emergency. Lock him up. You could be a journalist. You could be an activist. You could be someone in the wrong place at the wrong time. And they could declare an emergency and then say, well, you know, desperate times. And then they lock you up. This is why we have a constitution. So I'm willing to accept, although I've never been a big fan of guns, why the Second Amendment exists. And even though I was pretty left on the issue for a lot of reasons, I've resigned for the most part to the fact, well, you know what? The amendment exists. It's not my place to argue whether it should or shouldn't. Or I'm sorry, I, 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 you know, it's not my place to argue whether or not you can or can't own a weapon. We can argue about the Second Amendment, but so long as it exists, then I resign to, to that state where it's like, yeah, OK, I get it. People are going to own guns. The same is true for everything else. We have a constitution to prevent the government from creating BS reasons to detain us and take away our rights. I don't care who is in charge. I don't care who the Department of Justice is run by. They should not have that power. The Constitution should supersede the emergency. This is the point. Before we had the, the Bill of Rights, when, when we as a, as a group of colonies were dealing with the oppression from the British Empire, or whatever it was at the time, they were using arbitrary means to, to seize our assets and, ta- and take away our rights. So our, our founding father said, never can the government do this? So no, I do not believe it should, it should ever pass constitutional muster that they would argue, but an emergency right now, don't care. I do not care. We saw what the authoritarians did in China. And no, I will not accept that. That will not come to this country. I am willing to accept certain things that we must do in times of an emergency. Like I'll stay home. We will sacrifice. We won't do our, go to our businesses. But detaining people pre-arrest or pre-trial? No. Nah. It's bad enough that people who are accused of crime spend, a t- spend time in jail at all, but that's a compromise. You get arrested. You're not proven guilty. They still, they still put you in jail for a brief period until a judge can, can see you and determine whether or not, based on the charges, you should be allowed to go on bail or bond or whatever. Even still, poor people are left to, to rot in jail, lose their jobs and have their lives destroyed. But you know what? That's the compromise. You're not convicted, but some people, that's the punishment itself. We've got serious challenges in this country if we're going to uphold the Constitution, but it seems like the whole thing is eroding around us. They say the department also asked Congress to pause. Oh, I'm sorry, I read that. Trump recently declared the coronavirus crisis a national emergency. Another controversial request. 
The department is looking to change the federal rules of criminal procedure in some cases to expand the use of video conference hearings and to let some of those hearings happen without defendants consent, according to the draft legislative text. Video teleconferencing may be used to conduct an appearance under this rule, read a draft of the potential new language for federal rule of criminal procedure, crossing out the phrase, if the defendant consents. Video teleconferencing may be used to arraign a defendant, read draft text of Rule 10C, again striking out the phrase, if the defend- defendant consents. So I'll tell you what. I'm okay with teleconferencing. I'm okay with having to detain some people for certain reasons. But here's what I'm not okay with. Let's say that, you know, I talked about this on the podcast the other day with, with Adam, Tim Cast IRL, if you haven't seen it. What happens if in several months the virus is actually going away and several people say, hey, but look at all the powers we have. We shouldn't give this up. So they crumple up the report and throw it in the trash and then just say, nope, emergency's not over. What happens if we know the virus has gone away, but they claim it doesn't matter. We're still under emergency because it could come back. It's one of the things they've been saying. It could come in waves. So we may be at a point where the hospitals are, are, are now, you know, uh, undue strain has been removed and they're operating normally. And the government could still say, well, well, but it can come back. Now, I'm not okay with that. And I hope the rest of you recognize that we have to defend our civil liberties, no matter who's in charge, because even if you trust the president now, it'll go to the next president. That's the problem. Keep an eye on this stuff. I'll see you all in the next segment tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel.